Greetings, everybody. I'm Diane Thomas, and welcome back to my Certified High Performance Coaching Training Series in support of Diane CHPC Recertified Project 2017. It's an online crowdfunding campaign hosted at Generosity by Indiegogo, and it was launched on April 17th to help me raise the funds I'll need to recertify as a Certified High Performance Coach in June. Now, this campaign runs through May 26th. And there's a link below this video if hopefully you are interested in becoming a contributor. Greatly appreciate that. As well as a perk partner because even though we're winding down, there'll still be some opportunities for you to participate and offer any goods and services you have as incentives to visitors to the site. So hopefully you'll be interested in doing that as well. Now this training series has been accompanying this campaign through May 26th and we're winding down in the last few days of it. And so what I'm gonna be doing um, much of this time is just recapping what we've learned. We've had five weeks of, or four full weeks of instruction and just giving you the basics in terms of certified high performance coaching, what it is, how we use it to help our clients get to higher levels of achievement in five key areas, which are called the five pillars of high performance, clarity, energy, courage, productivity, and influence. And as you know, I had been spending one day per work week on each of those pillars. So Monday was clarity, Tuesday is courage, oh, energy, Wednesday is courage, Thursday productivity, Friday is influence. So today is Color Me Courage Wednesday. And this is a day we were talking about how we, what, the, what are the things that we can do to show up more boldly and to be more confident in how we move through life as high achievers. There's much that we need to do. We have to step out of our comfort zones to do that. So how do we do that most effectively? and most efficiently and in a way that's going to impact ourselves as well as the people around us. So what the big question we were looking at during this time, of course, is how we were going to approach conversations. Much of what we have to do a lot of times in terms of stepping up to courage has us facing some challenges of some sort, usually with ourselves first. So what I had you do was look at a couple of key areas. And what I wanted to do at this point as we're moving to the end of this campaign is for you to kind of step back and look at what, you're, what you've learned and what you're ready to put into action in terms of taking a bold step towards your courage and developing it, using your courage to develop you your, your outcomes and where you want to get to in the next 60 days. That's the, the key number because you know it takes about 30 days to learn a habit, to come out of something that's not working for you and to create some practices as we've spoken about around what are the things that you should be doing. And hopefully you've gotten some tools from this training to help you move into that. And then another 30 days, what are the big things that you're looking to accomplish? that require courage. And so just to recap some of what we talked about in terms of building a courageous persona and stepping out more boldly was a mirror challenge. As you remember, we were talking about how, what are some of the things that we can do certainly to help us address some particular questions in terms of honesty with people in our lives. So I had issued this challenge to you to take a look in the mirror for two solid minutes and ask yourself this following question, who have I not been honest with about my feelings, thoughts, needs, and ambitions, and what is it costing me? There's a cost to everything we do not do. And so what opportunities were missing? What what stresses were you causing in your life or are you causing in your life because you haven't had an honest conversation? And we know a lot of times there's some hesitation around having that honest conversation because we need to adjust some things with our, within ourselves. And we talked about pain avoidance motivators. The things that are preventing us from even having those conversations are often around some fear and they're fear-based issues around change and loss. So we talked about loss change, which were were some of the fears that we have around just life changing, just moving from one way of doing things, moving 
things moving from the status quo, um, from mediocrity into mastery. There's some some fear around that. We also talked about process. So just the very act. What are some of the things that you're going to have to do to move, to change? And how are you going to deal with that mentally, emotionally, physically? And then we talked about outcome pain. So in the event, these changes that you're making aren't turning out to have the outcomes that you're looking for. Is that really all bad? There may be some good in that. If you take the lessons from what you've learned, there's usually much to benefit from that. So we looked in terms of what are the positive things and how, how are some of the tools that you can use? What are some of the tools that you can use around getting around pain avoidance? And then we looked at, in recent days, we were looking at, okay, well, this conversation that you want to have, this thing that you want to do, this movement that you want to make, uh, in terms of having this conversation and being honest, certainly with yourself first, that's what the mirror challenge is about. And then with other people, how do you move through that in a smooth way? Because you're the one that's already made these decisions about how you want to move and what you want to do. But how do you engage other people in terms of the one-on-one -on -one conversations you're having so that you are creating allies instead of enemies? And that's when we spoke about taking a perspective of empowering others through acknowledging their free will, giving them the opportunity to perhaps reject, then initially reflect perhaps, and then hopefully in the end accepting whatever change you're proposing. Particularly, again, if this is going to impact someone because we know they may be just as anxious or even more so about this change that you're about to present to them than you are. And so keeping that in mind, giving them some time to adjust to it, recognizing that whatever the conversation is may take a minute for them to get through. So just being aware of that and being sensitive to their needs. So these were the three big things that we spoke about during this series on courage. And what I'm hoping that you'll be able to do, if you weren't able to do any of the challenges, please review the videos that, that were previously recorded and are available to you. And, and, and then as well, there'll be a link below this video so you can connect with that on my YouTube channel. And then seriously sit down, take some notes, do some meditation and mindfulness as we talked about in terms of what are some of the particular areas of your life, maybe something in your career where this strategy will uh, apply to you or something with your family, your spouse, your children, uh, and, and, and maybe some other activities, the things that you have going on in your life, your health, you know, some serious questions, some serious issues that you need to address, that you feel you need to have courage in moving towards and facing. Hopefully the strategies and practices that I've shared with you during this series is going to help you move forward in that. Now, courage is something certainly it's seemingly easier to talk about than, than it actually is. And as we've spoken before, it's something we call up when we need it. Well, you need it right now in some area of your life. And you're going to be scared. There's going to be some things that may frighten you about it. And maybe even temporarily depress you. Okay. But I think if you've got some strategies and some tools as we've offered in this series, it will help you move through this a little easier because there's an inner strength within you that you know as a high achiever, you don't want to be blocked any longer from moving to your heights of performance that you need to achieve. And you're going to have to do some work to get to that space so that you can overcome the things that have been holding you back. So high achiever. I certainly hope that you found some value in this series, that you're going to take on these challenges that I've proposed and certainly over the next 60 days, look forward to making some very big, bold actions in your life. And again, 
please share whatever comes up for you. Any questions you have, please put them in the comment boxes below this video. Wherever you see it show up, I will respond to you, and I know it's going to help someone. So until next time, have a fabulous Color Me Courage Wednesday, and thank you so much for participating.